Zeke Yeager, for me, is a very interesting character. Throughout the entirety of the story of Attack on Titan, Zeke has ultimately come into the picture as being one of the most frivolous and at least one of the most well-explored characters compared to others. I think the only other person that could kind of have a competition with him uh, in terms of how much character development and how much kind of panel time we've gotten from Zeke would be Reiner. But those characters specifically are entirely different. Zeke, for me, has a very interesting viewpoint on a lot of different things. A very weird way of seeing things. So I thought it would be a good idea to try and understand his perspective, trying to see through his eyes, basically delving into his mind. And I think the best place to start with this, into helping us understand what his character is like, is kind of traversing back to when he was a child and how everything kind of evolved from there. The concept of hatred is instilled into him. You could go as far as say as majority of the children of Mali are already kind of pushed into the world of hatred. And within that cycle of a racial warfare that's been going on for thousands of years. Why this is so important is because one of the most prominent things that Mali does to its children is it turns them into soldiers and warps their mentality, warps their viewpoint at a very, very young age. And this has a very detrimental effect on their mental health. This would not be in terms of suicidal, but it could be, but more so in the development phases of trying to understand different perspectives, trying to not hate a completely new race. Just try and imagine yourself being raised and warped to completely hate a singular race because of where they come from or the color of their skin or the ideology that they uphold. Constantly being reminded that we have to destroy these people, we have to kill these people, we have to get rid of them. Zeke is the product of that and it's very difficult when you've gone through so much warping and so much forced development at such a very young and crucial age of mental development. It's very hard to break free of that. So Zeke has confronted the kind of brutality of it and he's a byproduct of Mali to every extent probably Mali's biggest weapon being the holder of the beast titan we found out about his revolution rather recently and it was actually at a quite a young age so he's had this plan in motion since the very beginning or at least since he became the beast titan one thing i find very odd about his plan, which is to kind of euthanize all of Eldia, is his ideology towards it. His pure admiration, or his pure desire to make this the only plan possible. I found this odd, with finding someone that is willing to kind of break this birdcage alongside of him. You would think that Eren and the Beast Titan and everyone in between that's following them as of now, taking over Mali would be a more frivolous option. Yes, it would cause mass destruction. Yes, a lot of innocent people would get caught in the crossfire and be killed. But the race and Mali would still continue. Instead, Zeke is so stuck on this plan of euthanization and completely stagnating an entire race of people. Why do you think that's so? When I sat down and thought about this for quite a bit of time, I could realistically only come to one conclusion, and that is how Zeke views Eldia. As a child that had been raised to such a desperate and warrior mentality and just a warping extent, even though he has good intentions to break this hatred and he doesn't have direct hatred towards Eldians, I still think that his ideology is warped his depiction to the point where he thinks the only way to kind of bring peace is to completely obliterate an entire race of people. With that in mind, I don't think I've ever seen people mention on why Zeke hasn't offered or even thought about the idea of completely destroying Mali. Obviously, the euthanization of the Eldian people and the destruction of Mali and killing them are completely different things, but surely the idea would have popped through his head sooner or later, don't you think? If you were to specifically think about it, kind of taking down Mali and destroying them would only turn into more government slaughter. You wouldn't realistically have to kill the innocent people of Mali. All you'd have to do is take out the people that are in control, the people that are warping their own citizens. Sure, the current citizens wouldn't be happy with this and the even the soldiers that are underneath the kind of higher ups wouldn't be happy with this, but with a bit of power and a bit of time, they could learn to understand one another. Why has Zeke not thought about this? Instead, he's so headstrong on the euthanization. And I personally believe that he has good intentions, but is severely warped from his childhood days. And 
and the experience that he has had within Mali and then probing him and creating him making him think a certain type of way. I don't personally think that the way Zeke is approaching the situation is of his own nature or fruition. I think it's the kind of planted seed that Mali does to all of their children. And a very good example of this is Gabby, someone that is so young and is so frivolous and growing into such a prominent fighter has so much hatred towards Eldia which she doesn't even know why. These children should not be a part of this war yet they are warped to such an extent and we've seen such a tragic but beautiful depiction of that with Gabby and her confrontation with Eren. Zeke has gone through that extent already, however now he has the power to bring forth a result. I think Zeke doesn't realize what he is doing is wrong. I feel like he has a very strong and independent ideology that he certainly believes in. But I think because of his past, because of his childhood and Mali dotting over him and warping him to such an extent, it's completely unknown to him that what he is doing is actually really wrong. Not only in the grand scheme of things, but on a more personal level. Zeke's ideology now, or at least the whole architecture of his ideology, the euthanasia plan goes against it completely. It's the one thing within his motive that doesn't necessarily make sense. You can say he's somewhat being benevolent, but at the same time, that idea of destroying a whole race and discontinuing it still brings forth hatred and doesn't really allow for freedom. Freedom would involve the freedom of all parties, of all races, not being constricted within a birdcage. If you completely obliterate one race, is it really freedom or is it more controlled freedom? Mali controlling the Eldian race like they have been for years. Over the years and how much power Zeke has gained, I think he's viewing the world in a very specific light that he himself does not realize is completely wrong or at least inherently incorrect, which puts him at a very odd situation. Because his ideology is so strong right now, you can 100% see him going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eren and having their conflicted ideologies meet, because I can guarantee at this point that Eren does not want to continue with this euthanasia plan. And the only way that Zeke can continue this plan is with Eren and the ability of the Founding Titan, basically rewriting the Titan structure to begin with, in total rewriting the Eldian people. It's also never come to Zeke's mind that if he can actually euthanize the entirety of the Eldian race, surely he could stop the Titan curse from continuing, euthanizing them in a way that is not in the process of reproduction, but actually the continuation of the Titans transferring. These are all possibilities. And when you kind of look at that from a third person perspective, when you're looking at Zeke's character, sometimes you overlook the importance of that. However, if you try and get within Zeke's mind and try and understand what he's thinking, what he's looking at, and how he's looking at things, he does not see himself being in the wrong, yet he hasn't had anyone there to kind of give him other options. He hasn't had other people within his realm, or he himself has not come to the own idea because of his own mentality being so completely broken. And at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. Because one of the biggest things, and one of the most realistic things that could evidently be prominent within Attack on Titan, and I strongly believe this, is that these children within Mali being so dangerous and having so much hatred, Mali themselves are continuing the circle of hatred. This cycle that continues over and over again for so many years is because Marley keeps producing it with these children. And just putting yourself in Zeke's shoes, it's so difficult to not feel sorry for him. Even after everything that he has done towards Eldia and what he plans to do, even though he feels himself as a better person trying to stop hatred, at the end, he's getting rid of an entire race. But I feel extremely sorry for him that he cannot realize that that is the worst possible option to stop the circle of hatred and the continuation for it when Mali will continuously warp and manipulate their children to continue the cycle once these people that are warping are gone. It's a very scary situation and with so much power involved with Zeke, having the beast titan, having so much influence over titans specifically, being able to control them to an extent, having the royal bloodline that he has, one wrong move from Eren can change this completely. It's very difficult 
Like I said, to see Zeke as a bad person because what he thinks he is doing is okay. Even his revelation towards Eren and how he feels towards Eren as a brother is so extremely strong. Now, just try and understand that for a second. You know, a, a brother that he realistically didn't know he has who now pushes all of his support onto. Is it artificial? Is it real? Or is this a sub connection and the ever so warping of his childhood is the reason why he's so connected to Eren and sees him as such a frivolous brother because of his warping as a child to help and benefit and raise these people that you're closely connected to? Or is this artificial where he's trying to bring up Eren in such a way, put him into the spotlight so he can swoop in and take the founding titan to continue with his plan? Zeke is a very interesting character. His mind, more so, is very complex. Trying to sit within his head and see what he is seeing is almost scary. You can only imagine if Zeke was a real life person what he would be capable of. But even so, the amounts of pain and suffering that he probably had to go through as a child to kind of instill all of these concepts onto him. So even through his older age, where he is now, they're still theoretically ingrounded into him. They don't just disappear. The confliction, I believe, between Eren and Zeke will bring everything out into the open with how Zeke feels personally within his mind and maybe even his viewpoint. I wouldn't be surprised if he does turn against Eren to that extent or he feels betrayed as I think that would be much more fitting for his character at the moment. But I think if that does happen, he may come to the revelation that he's actually wrong. That what he was doing this whole time was kind of more so Marley's instilled plan. And that he was benefiting Marley this entire time by taking out the competition, by taking out an entire race. That would be a very nice conclusion if he felt sorry for even trying to be like that. A lot of people may see that as double backing on his character and his motives, but in total, if Isayama does write it correctly and puts a lot of attention into it, especially if it comes straight after a very big conflict between Eren and Zeke, their morals and their ideologies, it would be such an impactful goodbye and I think would beautifully end off his character. Coming to understand that he was wrong the entire time, that his childhood warped him to such an extent to have such lingering connections to the future. Even though what he wants is for the betterment of the entire world, it's still single-handedly destroying an entire race. And there's so many other options that can be done and achieved with both races surviving and growing and expanding, moving forward past his hatred, which Zeke, funny enough, has not accounted for, nor has he even thought about. I don't think that that is his mentality or ideology alone. I think Mali has done exactly what they have been doing with all of their children. And I think Zeke is the biggest byproduct of that. One of the strongest, one of the most influential, and one of the scariest. So with that being said, that is basically it. I kind of want to make this a new series. I guess in some way it is a character analysis. It's not a full character analysis, but it's kind of just looking at it from a different perspective, trying to understand why Zeke would want to do all this stuff or trying to understand why characters would want to do the things that they do, etc, etc. There's a very different narrative, I believe, when you try and understand a character's mind and see what they're seeing compared to looking at a character and critiquing them and their motives. So I think if you guys have any suggestions on what characters that you would like to see done, please let me know. I know Carnegie will obviously be in there and most likely Eren, but if there's other ones that are kind of off the book or maybe you're interested in, please let me know. But I'm actually going to end the video for you. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.